Our story goes back to 1880s Colorado when gold was found on the Cripple Creek. Miners dug into the earth in pursuit of raw treasure. Millions of tons of ore were brought to the surface from the mines from which the gold was milled. The leftover from that procedure, the mill tailings, became part of the landscape around the young towns of Victor and Cripple Creek. No one imagined the tailings would become a problem. Fast forward to the mid-20th century. A lot of those harmless tailings were carted off to the headwaters of Millsap Creek and stored behind two earthen dams. The dams didn't last, they simply failed, and the tailings were just out there. Finer than beach sand with a consistency more like powdered sugar, a lot of the tailings were picked up by the wind and blown into nearby Victor. And there was the water erosion. The real issue here is that we are in a watershed and this is not the only issue in this watershed. Um, this, um, this material is extremely fine in nature so when it rains up here it's very mobile and uh, this drainage is uh, uh, direct um, tributary to the Four Mile Creek watershed which eventually goes into the Arkansas River and, a, and then into Pueblo Reservoir. It's probably 15 years that uh, it started coming in the sand that would run onto the tailings that run onto our fields, bury the ditches and bury the fields. Bob Shoemaker's ranch is downstream from Millsap Creek. I went to the soil conservation. I went to the mine land reclamation in Denver. I was in the legislature at the time. Nobody could do anything. Finally, I uh, talked to BLM and they come up and looked at how it was settling in these streams, killing all the vegetation and the bugs. Julie Annier is with the Colorado Division of Reclamation, Mining, and Safety. Bob, I believe, was the person that actually brought the tailings to our attention. The tailings weren't toxic, so Bob couldn't leverage any emergency environmental cleanup. It's all inactive material. There was no cyanide or anything like that that I could use against anybody. He would carry around a jar of the water that he captured after a rainstorm and it was totally opaque and full of sediment and this is what he would carry around to all these different meetings to try to get somebody to respond and tackle this problem. And I wrote a letter and told them that I was thought they ought to fix it and they maybe I'd sue them and they got all excited and and I, I got to thinking, well, the only people who will get anything done with this will be the lawyers. And I, I was afraid they might give me the damn thing. The land that needed reclaiming at Millsap Creek is about the size of 30 football fields. Gullies 80 feet deep had formed where runoff water had eroded the tailings. The dramatic look of the unstable canyons would draw people to the edge, creating a serious public safety hazard. So the reclamation plan called for using the material, the surrounding material, to push it into those gullies. So the whole project involves moving about a third of a million cubic yards of, of sand to create the final shape. Basically domed on the top so that it would shed water. And then we're covering that with approximately 50,000 cubic yards of material that was donated by Cripple Creek and Victor Gold Mine Company. For six years, reclaiming Millsap Creek was on Julie's to-do list. Every year, I was just short the money that I needed to do the preferred reclamation alternative, and then it would become more and more costly every year that we would wait. So when I heard about Tom Bowen and Tom Foreman, their program with the Department of Corrections, I immediately tried to contact them because I saw that as a way to get the work done at a less expensive price than bidding it out. At the Buena Vista Correctional Complex, Tom Bowen teaches vocational heavy construction technology to minimum security inmates. At first I was reluctant. Uh, we, I had to reconsider about three times because it was a pretty large project. The enormity of it was a somewhat intimidating at the beginning, but the inmates that we brought out here, which are students in this program, 
they, uh, they took to it pretty well. When I first came to the job site here in Victor, the Millsap job, um, my first impression was that it couldn't be done. Um, it looked like the Grand Canyon, and it just seemed like an, a huge amount of palings that had to get moved to complete this, this job. Julie and her colleagues accepted that the inmate crew would require a learning curve lasting about a month on all the equipment. Each man learned each machine by taking turns on them, from bulldozers and heavy hauling trucks to excavators and even a water truck. It actually has helped us, uh, the, the vocational program, enormously in the fact that there's a lot of seat time and the equipment and a lot of learning opportunities for them. I started meeting each inmate individually and so I'd go around to each piece of equipment and talk to each guy and, and kind of got to know uh, all the guys individually. It took the inmate crew six months to complete the project. They were really proud of this project. They asked me for photos so that they could send it to their parents. I take photos of them because they say that their parents never um, thought that they were really ever going to do anything and they didn't believe that they were actually operating this equipment because they had screwed up their whole lives. At the end, the men gave her a thank you card. Julie, thank you for supporting this program which gives us a chance to become citizens and a chance at life. Uh, my name is Wesley Vale. I was charged with vehicular homicide and was sentenced to eight years DOC. This former inmate worked on the Millsap Reclamation Project before he was released to a halfway house in Denver. When he looked for a job, Wesley could confidently show the owner of this private excavation company that he knew what he was doing. I told him that I could operate and this and that, and I didn't have a whole lot of you know, time experience to tell him that I had. So I got the chance to be put on a piece of equipment to show them what I can do, and they were impressed and hired me. You know, it was a pretty tragic event that you know, caused me to go to DOC. Uh, you know, that's the part that I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. All I can do is take one day at a time and keep moving forward. And in the big picture, it was it was a blessing for me. You know, I I got to really develop some some skills. You know, running heavy equipment, and I got to develop a lot personally and grow a lot. And I have the confidence and you know mindset to come out here and succeed with anything that I do. Our story has more happy endings, such as the lessons learned from creating partnerships. I got to know people, and I got people in the community involved in something that they never would have been involved in. If you give people an opportunity, people want to help. They want to do something good. They don't know what to do. And I provided them a lot of opportunities <laughs> to do something good. Something good, as Julie says, that went beyond reclamation to restore the land and rebuild lives.